welcome to all, and especially those that are watching us uh, on the computer and what have you, and any visitors that are here, we're happy to have you with us. And I'm very happy to say that Sue Brubaker and Joanne are with us this morning. I have a few announcements, so I'll go first if anybody else wants to. <clears throat> Pam reminded me to um, tell you that she's happy. She's been getting gift cards for Family Promise. <clears throat> that will be in two weeks, starting the week of the 20, 21st. And, uh, you know, we want to make sure that the families know that we still have a lot of support for them. So if you can and want to, you can give, drop off gift cards at the church or even send them directly or drop them at Pam's home. Um, St. Burke's, we're doing very well, I must uh, tell you. March 14th is our next uh, meal that we're going to be feeding the uh, shelter, and um, I will be dropping that money off on Friday when I take my family to dinner, because Hamid is having uh, Safe Burke's fundraiser at the <clears throat> restaurant on Friday evening from 5 to 8. And it's $20 and you get the meal, but all the money goes to Safe Burks. He's not taking any of the money. He is donating whatever is brought in to go to Safe Burks. And I'm also very, very happy to announce that Ken told me that we have collected already $346 in addition to this feeding that we're doing in March. So now we can feed again in April and have half again another month. So if you'd like to please continue contributing to Safe Burks, it is greatly appreciated. You just earmark when you send money to the church that it's for Safe Burks or for Family Promise, wherever you want to donate your charitable money. And we do greatly appreciate it, and our community does too. Are there any other announcements? Just a couple of, of things. Um, I'll begin with concerns and then with joy. Uh, and obviously the concern is what is going on in Ukraine. As it turns out in the providence of God on our church prayer list today is Presbyterian Disaster Assistance. And that is our denomination's program that responds to disaster. And obviously uh, we are witnessing a disaster of um, historic magnitude. So um, if you wish, you can look on the, there's a uh, one great hour of sharing attachment here for those of you who are here this morning. And you can go online and there's actually one of those little query codes that if you know how to use the QR code on your phone, uh, we'll have you ask Zoe if you don't. Um, but uh, we, uh, you can um, use that to, to text and, and make a donation to one great hour of sharing, which Right now, the focus is, as I said, on um, uh, Ukraine and on the refugee crisis going on there, and certainly want to continue to hold that um, in our prayers. Um, Shauna, how is your aunt doing? She's still hanging in there, so she's, she's tough stuff, so we'll continue to pray for her and for the family. Uh, and uh, also, uh, we just wanted to announce uh, uh, if, if you send an email to the church or to me and you don't get a reply, try again or text me or call me because we are having email issues, which is such fun. So, so if something happens, like we had that happen this week and I apologize. And so uh, what we didn't get, but we would have had in the bulletin and want to lift up and celebrate uh, is that the flowers are presented in memory of Reverend J. Raymond Brubaker by Cindy and Bill Stein, who were married by Reverend J. Raymond Brubaker 47 years ago on March 1st here at Pennside. So uh, I want to thank the Steins for the flowers and, and just continue to be blessed by Ray's ministry here. And, and the last joy, which of course also is a concern, deep concern, uh, is that I understand that Zoe Banks had her 16th birthday and got her learner's permit. <laughs> I drove to church today. All right. So let's sing happy birthday to Zoe. Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday, dear Zoe. Happy birthday to you. All right. All right. So when we start the Ride to Church program again, we'll just put Zoe on the list. <laughs> Thank you. And I do have to say good morning to my sister and brother-in-law. They are watching from Charleston today. So with that, let's begin our hearts with worship with the prelude. beautiful. Join me in the call to worship. The season of Lent sends us on a journey. We follow the way of Jesus who faced trials, trouble, temptation, and testing. Our call is to trust in God alone, to do God's will in all things. <clears throat> Join me in the prayer of the day. God most high, thank you for signs of your power and grace shown to us even in the wilderness. Give us courage to stand firm in your word in every time, trial, and testing, that we may enter the land of your freedom and receive the salvation you so generously give through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
God is faithful, leading us into freedom, but we are conditioned to the slavery of sin. Comfortable with the way things are, we lose sight of the way God intends them to be. We bring our confession before the one who is more powerful than Pharaoh in Egypt, mightier than the devil in the wilderness. Please join me in the prayer of confession. O oh God, our refuge and fortress. Forgive us when we fail to trust in you. We fail to temptation. We are swayed by false words. We speak false words of our own. We choose our ease and comfort over your demanding claims upon us and upon the world. In turning from you, we settle for less than the abundant generosity you intend. Forgive us, we pray. Do not let us be put to shame, O God. Hear us as we call to you and show us your salvation. In Christ's name we pray. declares, the Lord is generous to all who call on God's name. Friends, believe the good news. God does not turn away from us, but desires to bring us into the glorious freedom offered in Jesus Christ. Everyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. Thanks be to God for this good news. As those who have received grace, let us celebrate this gift by sharing it with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. seated we're gonna have the children's room now come on down guys all right let's see here okay good morning what's different in church this morning There are people here. <laughs> That's different, isn't it? We've been virtual. We've been on the interwebs, in the, in the cloud, forever, wandering in the cloud. And now we're getting back. Pretty cool. What is different about being with people in person versus being like on Zoom or any of those internet things? Like, did you do school like on, on the internet? Okay, how was that? Boring, okay. Did you feel like, boy, it's so great to see my friends? No. <laughs> did, you, did you feel like when your teacher was teaching that they were really being personal with you? No. no. Okay. 
was it kind of like eating, have you ever had a saltine cracker? Okay, no soup, no cheese, no peanut butter, just saltine. How's that? Eh, not your first choice? No, okay. That's kind of like church on the web, kind of. It's not in person, you can't talk to people. And so that's part of the joy of this first Sunday in Lent, is that we can be together again. And we can kind of get together and be together. And one of the things that's most important of all is that you're here. Because you are the future, and it is just wonderful to be a part of you and see how people grow and develop and become. Because the next thing you know, you're going to be driving a car like Zoe. Which is hard for all of us to cope with. <laughs> Both Zoe and you. Anyway, um, but that's just part of the joy of, of, of being alive together. And you help us be alive together. So thank you for being here. Thank you for the gift that you are. And, and know that, uh, that God loves you and God blesses you. So as we begin this Lenten season, uh, we begin it together. And that's a wonderful thing. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you that we can be here. Thank you that we can be together. Thank you that we can see one another face to face. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of all the generations, those of us who are old, those of us who are middle-aged, those of us who are young, those of us who are children. Uh, oh, Lord, thank you for this family of faith and that we can be reunited today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much. Oops. God, as we begin this Lenten journey, we confess, as your son said, that we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so grant now, O God, that as your word is read, uh, your word through Holy Scripture, uh, Lord, that your word would be spoken by the power of your spirit in our hearts, that we might be renewed and transformed for your service and for your kingdom. O oh Lord, make us instruments of your peace in this world, we pray, through Christ. Amen. Our first reading today is from Deuteronomy 26, verses 1 through 11, found in our Pew Bibles on page 180 in the Old Testament. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God 
that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket <clears throat> from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Armenian was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien. Few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with the signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. Our psalm today is Psalm 91. And verses 1 through 2 and then 9 through 16. Let us read it responsively, please. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, no scourge shall leave your tent. For he will command his angels and concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them. As we come to our time of offering, I uh, want to again continue to thank you for your generosity as Diane shared. Uh, we are now uh, able to be almost half month, halfway into the month of April in terms of our uh, goal and our mission to help the people at Safe Burks and to provide food for them. Um, you know, Jesus says in Matthew 25, you know, I was hungry and you gave me food. And so for your generosity through Safe Burks, uh, through Family Promise, and, and certainly through uh, the offerings to Ukraine, um, this is a time for God's people to be generous. And I thank you for doing so. Uh, may God bless us all and may God bless uh, the people of Ukraine. And with that, now we offer you a minute of peace. in promise butterflies will soon be free in the cold and snow of winter there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until it's seized on something God alone can see
From the past will come the future, what it holds a mystery, unrevealed until it sees on something God alone can see. Something God alone can see, unrevealed until it sees on something God alone, which God alone can see. give you thanks for the gift you have given us. We give you thanks for the blessings that you so generously share. We give you thanks that in this land of the free, oh Lord, we prosper and flourish. And so for our neighbor in need, oh Lord, we offer our gifts. For the people of Ukraine, whether they be in Ukraine or in refugee centers across Europe, O oh Lord, we offer our gifts. And O oh Lord, we pray for the workers who even now are answering your call and are going there to be instruments of your peace. And so, God, we offer to you our gifts and we offer our prayers to bless the people of Ukraine and the people who care for them through Christ. Amen. Be seated. Our gospel reading this morning comes from Luke chapter 4. And Jesus has just been anointed by the Holy Spirit. And then this. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. The devil said to him, To you... I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I will give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, it is written, worship the Lord, Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem, placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command His angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. 
When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The grass withers, the flower falls, but the word of our Lord endures forever. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Lord, for the gift of your word read, we give you thanks. And now as your word is proclaimed, we pray that insofar as what is said is true, you would write it on our hearts and give us the grace to believe. And insofar as it is false, may it fall to the ground, soon be forgotten, and do no harm. Amen. Martin Luther, it is said, was once asked, what would you do if you knew the world was going to end tomorrow? And Luther replied, I would plant a tree. It is with that spirit of confident hope that we begin our Lenten journey. And Lord knows, we begin this journey under threatening skies. The pandemic is near its end, and the war in Ukraine is well underway. We pray for its end and for the deliverance of the people of Ukraine, the people of Russia too. We pray that the Lord our God keep the world safe. And our theme for this Lent is The Road is Made by Walking, which is from a classic poem by Anthony Machado. It goes like this. Walker, your footsteps are the road and nothing more. Walker, there is no road. The road is made by walking. Walking, you make the road. And turning to look behind, you see the path you never again will step upon. Walker, there is no road. Only foam trails in the sea. Our lesson from Deuteronomy comes at a key intersection of key in the history of Israel. And it brings about an intersection of, of two key events. On one level, Deuteronomy is Moses' farewell address. His final instructions to the people that he has led for 40 years. Through Moses, God delivered Israel from Pharaoh's tyranny and Pharaoh's army. And remember that as you watch the news about Ukraine and the Russian army. Through Moses, God gave the law and established his covenant with Israel as God's chosen people. Through Moses, God led Israel through 40 years of wandering to the border of the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. What a journey. But Moses was at the end of his journey. How would Israel take the next step? Where will the journey lead? And on a deeper level, the text that we know as Deuteronomy is dated by scholars to the period when the Assyrian Empire was invading the land of Israel. And the stories and oral traditions and teachings of Moses that had been a part of Israel from the beginning were woven together into this text. Because God speaks a timely as well as a timeless word. And Israel had a hard road to hope. The promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey, would not be theirs for much longer. A journey into exile loomed before them. What a journey. How would Israel take the next step? Where will their journey lead? Walker, your footsteps are the road and nothing more. Walker, there is no road. The road is made by walking. Moses reminds us that we are all walkers. We are wanderers making our way through this journey of life. Some days we hope for a promised land. Some days we just pray for the strength to take the next step. And Moses points us to the source of that strength. He teaches us how to live in the kind of hope that plants a tree the day before the apocalypse. Moses tells us that we, when we come into the land the Lord our God has promised us, when we are, in the words of the hymn writer, safe and secure from all alarms, we are to go to church, bring a portion of the first fruits of our harvest because we are confident that by grace there will be more, there will be enough, there will be more than enough. We are to offer our grateful praise and tell the story that tells us who we are and who God is. And the story goes like this. 
Moses says, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number. And there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power, with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses teaches us that when we face an uncertain future, when the road ahead is unclear, remember who we are, God's chosen people. We don't believe in God by accident. We don't know about the cross and how Jesus delivered us from evil coincidentally. We don't remember the body and blood of Christ through the luck of the draw. God chose us. Just as God chose the people of Ukraine and Russia, for we must hope well of all. God chose us. And God is with us on our journey now, just as God was with us when we were wandering Arameans who went down into Egypt and lived there as aliens. And Moses teaches us that when we face a difficult present, when the way ahead is steep and perilous, and we are afraid of where the next step will lead, remember who God is. God is the one who hears our cries. God is the one who sees our suffering, who sees how we are wrong. God is the one who hears, who sees. And with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power, and with signs and wonders, God is the one who lifts up the lowly and casts down the mighty from their thrones. God is the one who parts the sea, who moves the immovable, who sets the captive free. My friends, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this Lent 2022, it's time to come back to church. We will always live stream because health and geography are real. And for those of us who are here, look where the journey has brought you. And isn't it good to be together in church again? I wish, maybe not sure when the live stream started, but if you could hear this room before this service, I was almost wishing we started church at 12 because I think Donna needed to hit two more chimes to quiet us down. It was good to be together again. Thank you for being here. And for those of you who are at home, what is keeping you away? We need your voice. We need to sing together and to pray together and to worship God together. We have been apart for far too long, and God knows it is not good for human beings to be alone. We've been apart for too long. And Lord willing, even if we have to set the tables up on the sidewalks and use paper plates and napkins and whatever, we need to eat together. We need to feast together. We need to celebrate together. That's what Moses said we're supposed to do with our offerings. We've been apart for far too long. We miss you. We need you. And I guarantee when you come to worship, wherever that may be, here at Pennside, at a church in your community, wherever you go, I guarantee when you go to worship in a sanctuary with the people of God, you will find what you've been missing and what you need. There is something in our souls that needs this. We have all been apart for safety's sake and for all of the right reasons. But the mask mandates are lifted. And all the experts tell us there isn't much disease in the area. It's safe to be together again. And it's time to tend to that soul hunger, that fast that we have been on for so, so long.
We need to be together. We need to pray together, especially about what's going on in Ukraine, to pray for ourselves and for our country. And we see Pharaoh's army coming towards us and the Assyrian army coming towards us. And yes, today, the Russian army coming toward us. We're all Ukrainians today. And we will find a way through this together. God will lead us to better days in the land of promise together. Because that's who God is. That's what this table's about. That's what God does. We don't know what the future holds. But we know who holds the future. Walker, your footsteps are the road and nothing more. Walker, there is no road. The road is made by walking. Our Lenten journey has begun. Remember who you are. Remember who God is and what God has done. Come to worship. Take your first step. Take your next step. Plant your tree. And be a grateful wanderer in this world. For God's sake and for ours. Amen. Does everyone have a communion cup and kit? Okay. Brothers and sisters, children of God, Scripture tells us that they will come from north and south and east and west and they will eat together at the table of God. For in God's kingdom, there is a place for all. In God's kingdom, there is plenty for all. In God's kingdom, all are welcome. All are welcome. All are welcome. You are welcome. Come to God's table and be fed. Let us sing together our hymn of communion. Number 527. On the night when our Lord was betrayed, he took bread, he blessed it, and he broke it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray and give thanks to God for this great gift. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise. O God, our creator and redeemer, in your wisdom you made all things and sustained them by your power. You formed us in your image to love and serve you, but we forgot your promises and abandoned your commandments. In your mercy, you did not reject us, but still claimed us as your own. When we were slaves in Egypt, you freed us and led us through the waters of the sea. You fed us with heavenly food in the wilderness and satisfied our thirst from desert springs. On the holy mountain, you gave us your law to guide us in your way. Through the waters of Jordan, you led us into the land of your promise and you sustained us in times of trial. You spoke through prophets, calling us to turn from our willful ways to new obedience and righteousness. You sent your only son to be the way to eternal life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty. And blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. He took upon himself the weight of our sin and carried the burden of our guilt. He shared our life in every way and though tempted, was sinless to the end. Baptized as your own, he went willingly to his death and by your power was raised to new life. In his dying and rising, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gift you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a living and holy offering of ourselves that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these your gifts of bread and wine. But the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ, and with all who are baptized in his name that we may be one in ministry in every place, as this bread is Christ's body for us. Send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. And we lift up before you, O Lord, the needs in our world, in our community. We pray, O Lord, for peace. We pray, O Lord, that you would deliver Ukraine from their invaders. And we pray, O Lord, that you would restore peace, that you would be with all of those working in the many agencies who are trying to care for the refugees. We pray, O oh Lord, uh, for those who even now are making their way over to Europe to assist. I pray for our brother Howard Dotson, who is on his way now to provide care and psychological support for the children of the Ukrainians. Pray, Lord, as well for the people of Russia. O oh Lord, this is not their war. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you would be with them as well as they endure the consequences of the actions of their leaders. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you would deliver us all from the hands of those who have brought this terrible thing into the world. Lord, we pray for our sister Sharon Smith and pray that you would be with her as she recovers from the injuries in her recent accident and guide her in the next step. Pray, O oh Lord, for Guy Haig as he continues to recover in the nursing home, for Hazel Fox and for Linda Fox as new life is coming to them. We pray your blessing upon them and that you would guide them and guard them on that way. Pray, Lord, for Shauna's uh, aunt and for the family there that you would bless them and watch over them as they continue to keep vigil and care for her on her final journey. And, oh, Lord, we pray for those who are watching as well who find themselves in difficulties, both economic and personal, for those facing their own health crises. Uh, Lord, we thank you for those who have had good news and good reports this week. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the many signs of your watchful care that surround us every day. Help us, O oh God, to be obedient to your call, to love all your children, to do justice and show mercy, to live in peace with your whole creation. Guide us through the desert of life. Quench our thirst with the living waters. Satisfy our hunger with the bread of heaven. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection. 
When with the redeemed of all the ages, we will feast with you at your table in glory through Christ. All glory and honor are yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church now and forever. And we are bold as your children to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let all God's children be fed. And I invite you now to peel back the upper layer of cellophane, or if you're at home, to take your bread. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Holy God, as we begin this season of Lent, we confess how hungry we are. We confess how we hunger and thirst for you. We confess our need for you. Oh Lord, we acknowledge that we have wandered in a wilderness for a long time. And we are searching for you. We are in need of you. There is an emptiness in us that only you, O oh God, can fill. And so we give you thanks for this gift of Holy Communion, for this sacrament, this sign of your grace, and for the way, O oh Lord, that it fills us as nothing else can. And so we pray, O oh God, as we begin this Lenten journey, that this nourishment, this fullness we have received this day, this grace upon grace, Lord, may it be for us strength for the journey hope along the way and the grace to take the next step that we may be grateful wanderers on your way. O oh Lord, for this gift we give you thanks. Amen.
Friends, we are not dismissed. We are sent to serve. We are sent to serve the needy with an open hand. We are sent to serve the stranger with an open mind. We are sent to serve our neighbor with an open heart. We are sent to serve our Lord, whom we will meet when we serve. And as we go, know that we do not go alone. The Holy One of Israel goes with us, above us to watch over us, beneath us to sustain us beside us to befriend us, behind us to defend us, before us to show us the way, and always within us, making all things, including us, new. Go in peace. Go with God. Amen. Amen.